At the beginning of this outbreak, we said we were adopting an approach of elimination while we vaccinated. That was the right choice and the only choice. That was because at that time only 42% of Aucklanders had one dose and 25% were fully vaccinated. In the seven weeks since, those numbers are now 84% and 52%, effectively doubled. So on people terms, that's 387,642 more Aucklanders who are now fully vaccinated. And we can see vaccines are playing an important role. Only 3% of cases in this outbreak were fully vaccinated. Modelling is also now telling us that while we're still seeing cases, they are 50% less than what we could have seen without vaccinations. That's an incredible number. But while we're transitioning from our current strategy into a new way of doing things, we're not there yet. We need more people fully vaccinated across more suburbs and more age groups. As we do that, we will be in a better position to safely lift those restrictions that are the hardest to live with. But in the meantime, the question that Cabinet working with the Director General and his team has been asking are, how do we continue to keep everyone safe while looking to find ways to make everyday life a little easier? How do we make the transition from tough restrictions at level three to a place where public health measures sit alongside vaccines and life feels a bit more normal again? Elimination was important because we didn't have vaccines. Now we do so we can begin to change the way we do things. We have more options, and there's good cause for us to feel optimistic about the future, but we cannot rush. That's why we need to continue to contain and control the virus as much as possible while we make our transition from a place where we only use heavy restrictions to a place where we use vaccines and everyday public health measures. We need to keep using the tools we have. We need to vaccinate. We need to test, we need to find cases, we need to isolate them and actively control any outbreak now and in the future. So what does that mean for our next steps for Auckland? Over the past week, the public health team has been analysing each of the restrictions that we have and assessing which of these have played a key role in controlling this outbreak. That analysis has been used to identify those restrictions we believe can be eased while controlling the virus to the best of our ability. This phased approach is in three parts. At each stage, we will assess the impact of the previous phase before stepping down further. Step one, Cabinet has already confirmed, will come into place from tomorrow, Tuesday, 5 October at 11.59pm. Here, Auckland remains at level three, but with several key changes. The first... Aucklanders will be able to connect with family and loved ones again, but only outside. The science tells us COVID finds it hard to spread outdoors. So from midnight Tuesday, Aucklanders will be able to meet another household outside with a cap of no more than 10 people at any given time. Children can have a play date in a park. Friends can meet outside for a walk, a picnic or a beer. You can slowly see people you have missed over these past seven weeks, one household at a time. But please, it may sound like the outdoor part isn't relative, relevant, but it is in fact the most relevant part of all. Keep it outside. This part is absolutely fundamental to this change. The natural ventilation provided by being outside makes it hard for the virus to spread which makes outdoor gatherings the safest option. I know one of the hardest things about lockdown is not seeing the ones you love, but we've also seen that in this outbreak, families getting together has led to cases spreading. But by gathering outside, we can balance both these issues. So please be careful, wear a mask. If you take them off to eat or drink, keep your distance, give other groups a wide berth, but reach out and see people. I know it will help get people through. And just to be clear again, I've got a long way to go yet, Jessica, sorry. Just to be clear again, that's two households, a maximum of 10 people at any given time outdoors. 
The second change is the return of more children to early childhood education. At Alert Level 3, children have been going to early learning services where their parents or caregivers have to go to work and there are no options to care for them at home. Our public health team believe that with the right precautions in place, including limiting the size of groups to 10 children within a bubble at an ECE, strict infection prevention and control, the risk posed by the return of ECE is low. Early learning services can welcome more children back from Wednesday. The exact number will depend on the number of bubbles of 10 children they can manage on their site. And you'll remember this was an approach we took with our original lockdown. Parents, caregivers and teachers will also need to wear face coverings during pickups and drop-offs. Early learning services will contact parents in Auckland about the plan for their service and options for their children. To ensure this is done as safely as possible though, we're encouraging early learning teachers to get tested alongside other Aucklanders who've returned to work. And we'll look at options for more regular but less invasive surveillance testing going forward. This is an added precaution and an acknowledgement that our children of that age cannot be vaccinated. And the final change for this first phase is the ability to move around Auckland for recreation purposes. You'll be able to visit the beach, play bowls, sail, hunt, do outdoor CrossFit or yoga classes, all must continue to comply with the rule of being outside and keeping it to 10 people physically distanced. This is the first phase of our gradual transition. Some may ask if this is a risk to the current outbreak. Here I think it's important to note that the public health advice is that these changes are unlikely to contribute to uncontrolled growth in the outbreak. But we will monitor the situation very carefully to give us confidence as we move. At the same time, we believe these changes will make a material difference to Aucklanders' ability to maintain the restrictions that we have in place. These are all things we've taken into account with this decision. I'll now set out the next two steps in our phase transition. We do not have a date for these steps, but we will make an assessment of our readiness to step into them on a weekly basis, starting from next Monday. At step two, we predominantly remain in level three with some further changes. Retail will be able to open their doors again. Once open, the usual measures for retail will apply. People will need to wear face masks and keep up physical distancing. Public facilities will be able to open again. That means places like libraries, museums, pools and zoos would open. At this step, we'd also intend to increase the number of people who can meet outdoors to 25. The third phase of our plan then brings back those higher risk settings. Here, hospitality, such as cafes and restaurants, will be able to open, but with the precaution of seated and separated with a limit of 50 people. Close contact businesses like hairdressers will also be able to reopen at this stage with the usual mask use and with physical distancing. Gatherings at this stage would also extend to 50. These are the three phases of our transition that our public health team have designed and that has been approved by Cabinet. Alongside these phases, the separate question of the reopening of schools has been considered. Here, we'll need to assess our progress as we lower restrictions, but the current public health advice, if we move carefully, is that schools will be able to return after the school holidays on the 18th of October with a range of precautions in place. We'll continue to review this preliminary advice and we will signal in advance of the 18th of October this final decision. In the meantime, if your child is aged 12 and older and is not yet vaccinated, we strongly urge you to use the coming two weeks to get them vaccinated before school reopens to make the transition safer for everyone. In total, this phasing amounts to a careful and methodical transition plan for Auckland. As I said at the beginning, movement to each phase will be reviewed weekly. We'll need to assess the impact of each before making further alterations, but ongoing increases to Auckland's vaccination rates will also be essential to giving us confidence. Now to cover off quickly some additional important information. The easing of Alert Level 3 restrictions here that I've announced today will not extend to the North West Waikato Area Level 3. Current restrictions there are intended to be temporary measures while we get more information from contact tracing and community testing. But while we do that, we're keeping a simple level three arrangement for that area. As Auckland moves through all three phases of the plan we've set out over the next few weeks, I can confirm that the wage subsidy will continue to be available on the current settings. 
Auckland is still for the most part at alert level three and therefore the policy rationale for the continuation of the wage subsidy has been met. So just for clarity, all three of the stages I've set out today, the wage subsidy will still apply for. As has been previously indicated, the resurgent support payment will be available in three weekly instalments so as long as anywhere in the country is at alert level two settings. We'll update these policies as we transition to the new framework. You may have noticed that these three phases don't bring everything back online, like large-scale events in Auckland. That's because at the conclusion of this three-stage transition period, we will likely move to a framework that reflects a more vaccinated population and the ability to use vaccine certificates as a tool in the near future to reduce the risk of the virus spreading, especially in crowded indoor settings. This is our best pathway back to gatherings. We're currently talking to our event sector and hospitality around what this framework looks like, and we'll present the details on that plan next week, well in advance for any implementation of that framework so that people can prepare. In the meantime, the rest of New Zealand needs to continue to support Auckland to do the heavy lifting for the rest of us. This means we'll be staying at alert level two. The cases we've seen in the Waikato and the driver who has visited Palmerston North are a very clear indication of the need for us to maintain that stance. I know it's frustrating for communities such as those in the South Island that have not had a COVID case for a very long time, but it's important to remember that the reason there have not been cases is the careful and cautious approach we've taken and we don't want to risk unnecessary lockdowns. In the meantime, as we have throughout the pandemic, We've reassessed the settings at level two to see if there are any further ways to ease those settings and maintain a cautious approach. And we believe there is. Currently, we ask hospitality to be seated and separated with one metre between customers. We then overlay a cap on the top. The view of our public health officials is that for the rest of New Zealand, we can remove that cap for hospitality. The seated and separated rule will pri provide the safety we need. This is be will also apply to other events spaces and will issue guidance on this. Because social gatherings do not use the seated and separated rule, the limit of 100 will continue to apply for these. But right now, the single most important thing that people outside of Auckland can do if they want to see the return of large scale gatherings and events is get vaccinated. Or even better, if you are vaccinated, support and encourage someone who isn't to get along to a centre this weekend. Tomorrow, I'll set out our plan for the final stages of our vaccination campaign and activities to drive our numbers up even higher. On Thursday, we'll provide an update on the testing strategy going forward. At Cabinet Today, a report prepared by Professor David Murdoch from Otago University was presented. Professor Murdoch leads our testing advisory group and his work will form the basis of a new rigorous testing regime that will be central to our strategy to control the virus going forward. To conclude, and thank you for bearing with me for a lot of information to impart this Monday afternoon. Vaccines will mean that in the future we can do things differently. And the change, that change is within our sights. But even then our strategy remains that while cases will continue, we want to control the virus, stamp out cases and prevent hospitalisations. But with vaccines we have more options on how we do that. But that does mean we need you to be vaccinated. I've heard some people who are willing to be vaccinated say they're waiting for just a little longer till they make that choice. They may not be worried about the immediate side effects, but they want to see long-term health effects. I want to give you the assurance you need that the vaccine is safe, but I encourage you to have that conversation with your trusted medical professional. But please do not wait. Maintaining control of COVID, easing restrictions, it relies on the help of the vaccine. It's already making a difference, but we need everyone to do their bit wherever you live. This is not an Auckland problem, but rather a solution that only the team of five million can deliver on, and we need everyone to play their part. So you will have seen our comprehensive uh, 1 p.m. statement. Uh, just a couple of highlights from today's cases. There are the 29 new community cases, 28 of which are in Auckland, and one is, being, uh, is in Hamilton East. It's the case announced yesterday, but in our system today. There are three other household members uh, who have become cases are linked to the Raglan case who tested these people tested positive overnight and will be in tomorrow included in tomorrow's numbers as they were entered into the system after 9 a.m. Seven of our cases today at this point are as yet unlinked and interviews are ongoing. 
And as of yesterday's cases, nine of those remain unlinked at this point with in, uh, interviews and investigations ongoing. We have 12 active subclusters uh, where there are still cases emerging and uh, these are the focus, of course, for our public health respond, response. Looking ahead, we're expecting at least uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 additional cases just from those close household and other close contacts. Uh, and finally, just to re uh, emphasise again the importance of vaccination, you would have heard Wellington Intensive Care Dr, uh, Dr. Alex Sarides speaking yesterday about the concern that he and many of his ICU colleagues hold around the impact of COVID on our ICU and hospitals. Vaccines, as he said, are the most effective way of keeping pressure off our health system as they have proven in other countries. There's no doubt that in our current outbreak, vaccination has prevented people from being hospitalised or dying. And in terms of, uh, of actual cases in our outbreak, whilst nearly 50% of eligible New Zealanders are now uh, fully vaccinated, just 6% of cases in this outbreak have had both doses of the vaccine. That's cases who are aged over 12 who are eligible. So please, if you haven't already been vaccinated, you can make uh, my day by making tomorrow or today your day to be vac vaccinated. Thank you, Prime Minister.